At FDF, we spent years mastering our craft, from precise welding and machining to competing at the highest level of drifting. Every week, we'll be giving you our tips, tricks, and all the insider knowledge you need, straight from our shop to your screen. Welcome to Just a Tip Tuesday. What's going on, guys? Welcome to our first Just a Tip Tuesday. To give a brief rundown of kind of what we're going for on this series, Josiah and I had to talk about what we kind of want to do in 2024 for our our filming schedule and uh, consistency throughout the weeks. A lot of pages have done this before, tip Tuesday or tip whatever throughout the week. It doesn't have to be Tuesday. We decided we have a lot of variety of different guys in the shop. We have about six different departments, very skilled in everything they do. So we thought it'd be pretty easy to come up with a video once a week on a tip, whether it be in the welding department with Rain and Cam, talking about how they make jigs for a lower control arm, or whether it's powder coating with Kiernan, talking about some powder, machining, et cetera, et cetera. We have a bunch of different cool departments here. So we decided once a week, we'll talk to someone and they will give us a tip on what they do. Another cool thing about this series is that it's going to be everyone in the shop. So it's not just gonna be specifically Josiah. Josiah is the face basically of this channel, but it's FDF as a whole. We have 17 employees. So we're going to be meeting some new employees, some old employees, talking to them, they're gonna be giving some tips and it's just gonna be a super cool series, I think. And you guys can leave in a comment what you wanna see as a tip. If you wanna see something of how we do something, water jet, the mechanics department with Kyle working on cars, anything you guys wanna see, leave a comment and uh, we'll tackle it on one of the Tuesdays. This episode's gonna be kinda chill. It's gonna be talking to some of the people in the shop and getting their experience. So it's talking to some of the welding guys, see how long they've been welding for getting some information about them, picking their brains, so you guys can get excited for the episodes to come on Tuesdays. So, let's get into it. We're here in the welding department with Rain. We're matching. Two likes and we'll bring this sweater back. Rain's gonna give us a little rundown of his experience, um, how he started here at FDF, why he started here at FDF. Some quick short tips that he has right off the bat just to get started on this new series. They Everyone should know me. Everything. They should know me. I'm pretty recognized. Yeah. My name's Rain. I've been welding at FDF for nearly three years. Yeah, so I've been welding in general for five years, I think, if you include school, maybe a little over five years. So I went to college here in Ontario. Um, I graduated from Fleming in Peterborough. I was a two-year welding and fabrication program, um, one of the, the best in the area. Um, Kyle and I actually graduated from the same program, funny enough, and that's kind of how we met each other before FDF. Um, so anyway, I started at school there. Before I graduated, I already had a job local in the area. I was doing mostly aluminum TIG welding, um, and then some stainless and very little mild steel, but mostly aluminum TIG welding. A coworker I was working with at the time, he was helping build a Genesis, a pro Genesis. Shout out Chris and Graham. Um, so Chris Pai, he was having his Genesis built by Josiah. Graham and Chris are very good friends. I was working with Graham. He heard there was an opening at FDF and knew that I wanted to work there basically because I'd been talking about it so frequently at work. I just wanted to build race cars. That's what I got into welding for. Um, so he told me, hey, I heard there's an opening at FDF. They lost a welder or a welder was planning on leaving. So I drove down one day after work, spoke with Troy, dropped off my resume had a great conversation and then about a week or two later I got a call from Josiah saying he wanted to do an interview. So that's kind of how I started at FDF. Grinding from then, slowly getting better, more acquainted with the equipment and the style of welding here. Obviously I didn't have a very deep background in MIG welding, uh, but I mean it's definitely of the three major types of welding it's the easiest one to pick up fast. And luckily Cam was very eager to, to let me learn at my own pace and, uh, he wouldn't shy away from giving me pointers here and there because he had been here for so long at the time already. So I picked it up fairly quickly and now I do, I would say the majority of the production welding here at FDF, just because the stuff I weld is, I, I do it a lot faster than Cam because he's building more knuckles and whatnot. So they take a little bit more time. So I would say it's slightly over the majority of the production welding I do. Um, and it's just the two of us. So yeah, I've been welding for nearly three years at FDF. Um, so the stuff I weld specifically, 
um, that you guys would know off by hand. I do basically all the BMW stuff, knuckles, blowers, 350 regular kits, most of the Corvette stuff. Ooh, Subaru lift kits, that's one cam. I haven't seen cam bust down on a lift kit in a long time. So right now, actually, I've been working on some 350 stuff. So I'll give you guys a quick little glimpse at some of the 350 stuff I've been welding this morning. So those are uh, our rack relocations for 350Z subframe. So one thing that I heard Josiah say actually in a video, I think it was on the Corvette roll cage um, that I'd never heard before but made complete sense to me was the ABCs of welding. A, B, C um, standing for always be comfortable. That is by far like one of the biggest aspects to a, a solid weld is comfort and stability. Find a way to be comfort in any position, even if it is an uncomfortable position, try to dry run your weld. Um, so basically run the torch at the angle, at the speed or whatever that you would weld, just without pulling the trigger or starting the arc. Um, that's a big one I find, is if, uh, if, if I'm in an uncomfortable position, I'll nine times out of 10 dry run a weld. Uh, just to, to see if I'm gonna get snagged up on something, if, my, if I'm gonna be able to, to articulate my arm for the entire um, length of the weld so I can run it all in one. Other tips and tricks, just know your alloys, um, know your filler rods, maybe even your post weld treatment. Um, that one will get a lot of people, especially working in the OEM world on vehicles, a lot of cast steel, cast iron, cast aluminum. A lot of those things require post weld treatment, whether it be annealing, whether it be slower cooling rate, post heating, stuff like that to avoid cracking. Know the materials you're dealing with. I saw on Hoonigan actually did a very good demonstration I think they were doing, uh, they were welding on a rear end, a solid rear end. Uh, I think it was cat, cast iron that uh, they were working on. I forget who it was specifically, but they gave one good trick on telling the difference between cast iron and cast steel was the <clears throat> color of the, the grinding sparks. Um, so iron, obviously having a higher and iron content, the cast iron, um, the sparks will actually be red instead of orange like in the cast steel so that's another <clears throat> tip and trick one big one for the fabrication industry specifically i can see in the camera lens is uh loose clothing i always oh every sweater i own i cut the drawstrings out of you don't want to get sucked into a lathe you don't want to get sucked into a break stuff like that all those equipments you don't want it to get wrapped around a grinder always always be careful of uh, loose clothing um, just ppe in general and that's just a few tips and tricks to uh, production automotive fabrication. That's it. That's all I got. Oh, and listen to sick a music at the shop. Brother, I'm done. Oh, shit. He's going crazy. He got the fucking assault flight. <laughs> okay. Can we build a battle bot? Let us know in the comments if you guys want to see us build a battle bot. Hello, everybody. It's Kyle, the mechanic at FDF. Today, I'm working on Josiah's Corvette. What I'm doing is switching over some parts from the V1 Mega Mantis kit to the V2. I like to consider myself pretty handy when it comes to cars. Uh, I really like getting down and dirty into the mechanical stuff. I like changing engines and uh, suspensions and transmissions and all that stuff on my own cars. So I figured, why not? do something that I love. We got many cars on the go here at FPF. We got the size S14. We just put her back together uh, with the refreshed 440 and the G-Force trans and Bulldog rear end. Now I'm working on the Corvette. Like I said, I went to uh, school for welding. That's my background. I really like welding and I also really like working on vehicles. So a lot of these cars entail you know, custom fabrication and having the welding experience and having the experience of working on my own cars really helps out. Yeah, this job incorporates the best of both worlds with welding and mechanical work on cars. So I think that's, I think I got enough. Yeah. 10 I, minutes? It's a lot of me going, um, <laughs> um, you'll probably get like one or two minutes of good material. You're going to see a lot of this. <laughs> Well guys, my name is James Regan. Um, I am kind of the head of shipping and assembly here at, uh, at FDF. I haven't been here very long. I've been here for about two months now. Um, my previous experience has been far more with the automotive equipment side of things um, and also with the large scale building supply company side of things. So principally I'm in charge of getting a product from an order 
to the hands of a customer and then try to mitigate some of the issues that come along because when you are a build to order manufacturer and there are a million different chassis codes uh, there's going to be little intricacies and stuff that you need to work through to make sure that everything works when it finally gets to a customer's hands from a background point perspective like i said um, i would say the biggest thing that i kind of bring more so to the company would be uh, my experience with with inventory management um, so trying to make some changes here at the store to be able to make it so that the products flow through the, the system a little bit easier I would say um, I really really appreciated and, and enjoyed working and being brought on to the FDF family I've known Josiah uh, since about the conception of FDF um, I was involved in the Ontario drift scene back in like the 2012 2013 ish area and I've really been involved in like rally cross and some of the um, the other side and other motorsports um, but when you start to get into more of the corporate side of things you lose that fun aspect in your time so I'm um, starting to really enjoy getting back into the motion and being able to really enjoy my hobby again that's one of the things when you work again with an OEM uh, sometimes you're really focused on a car and you see a car as a product and not necessarily as something to have fun and enjoy with so um, that's been really fun and, and it's re really kind of shifted my my ideas yeah really excited for 2024 um, we have a lot of new products coming down the uh, the pipeline a lot of like little tweaks and changes um, just for some on-car adjustability there are some revisions coming that I'm personally pretty excited about because it's going to allow our customers to utilize their products a little bit easier um, in regards to a tip uh, the one thing that I have found has worked for me in my professional life has always been taking good notes. Throughout university, um, it's one of those things where you develop your own flow, your own style. Try to ask a lot of questions. Um, so as such, I try to develop some pretty good study habits. I've always kind of carried those on. I once had a prof tell me that uh, your brain is for thinking and your notes are for memory. So um, it's really good to have those references. When you're trying to remember everything that's happened in the day, sometimes it can get a little construed or you remember it incorrectly. When you, uh, when you always carry, you know, for me, it's a, I carry a little notebook, a little moleskine and a, a Stadler, uh, what do they call it, Stadler Mobile Office. Um, always have a pen on me because you never know when you're inspired to take a note or, or just something pops into your head that you might need to remember later. And I really utilize that throughout my life. Well guys, again, just a tip Tuesday. Cheers. That ends it for our first laid back tip Tuesday. From here on out, each episode is going to be dedicated to one tip. This episode was really only getting to know three of the guys at the shop. We have 17 employees in total, like I said. So next episode is going to be dedicated to a tip. Leave it in the comments what you wanna see, Corvette related, welding, shipping, whatever you guys wanna see, we'll film. So make sure you subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment of what you wanna see. And we'll see you in the next one.